Good evening, thank you for coming. Uh, this is a fantastic crowd. My name is Jeff Peterson. I'm the superintendent here at Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. This is my third year here. Um, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to really exchange information. First, exchange information on our part from the State Department of Education and from the school. And we also want to hear information from you, the community. Uh, the property down on Burt's Pit Road, it's, it's a gem for the community. We all know that. And we all want to be able to, I think, live there peacefully together. And, and that's the goal for everybody. Um, the focus of the meeting is going to be for us to listen to what you have to say. I am unsure if a forum like this has ever been held before, okay? Um, but I'm hoping that there can be a positive exchange of information. What we would like to do after we make our presentations, which will be very brief, I would love it if you had the opportunity to step up to the podium and uh, we give you three minutes to please say whatever you would like to say regarding how you, are, you would like to see the land used. Um, I would ask that if somebody else is at the podium, whether you agree or disagree with whatever that person is saying, please be respectful of that person's time. And I am gonna ask the people at the podium to please be mindful of the three minute time limit and we will be uh, keeping a clock on that, okay? So again, we're hoping for a peaceful, positive, productive evening and, and we wanna hear what's going on. We wanna hear what you're thinking about and we, we really wanna give you the information that we have so, so you're more informed too. I think a lot of the folks really don't know what that land is and what it's being used for and what it should be used for. So uh, that's why we have some folks from the State Department here and they're gonna help us out. What I wanna do now is I'd like to introduce the, the people at the head table. Starting down at this end, and you don't have to applaud for these people, but even though they deserve it, uh, John Cotton is a member of the Board of Trustees here at Smith. Uh, Tom Fitzgerald is another member of the Board of Trustees. John LeBeau is the commissioner of uh, agriculture here at the, in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, Mary Jane Bacon is a, a staff member at Senator Rosenberg's office. Of course, Representative Peter Colcott is here, and we appreciate his efforts to be here. And the Honorable Dave, uh, Mayor David Narkowitz is here as well. Okay. At this time, I'm going to hand it over to John LeBeau, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what this land is and uh, what it should be being used for, okay? Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is John LeBeau. I'm the Commissioner of the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources. Um, I brought a few people from our department out with me tonight. I have Jared Kennedy, our Director of Agricultural Conservation and Technical Assistance, and uh, Barbara Hobson, who is our Land Use Administrator in this part of the state. Um, the reason that uh, our department is here at all is because in 1983, uh, there was legislation enacted that transferred the care and custody of approximately 285 acres of agricultural land at the Northampton State Hospital uh, to the Department of Food and Agriculture, which is now the Department of Agricultural Resources. Uh, for those of you who want to uh, check the citation, it's uh, chapter 568 of the Acts of 1983. That legislation further provided that the Department of Food and Agriculture, again now the Department of Ag Resources, Enter, enter into an agreement with the city of Northampton and its assigned agent, Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. One other thing that the legislation made very clear, and I quote, the land shall be used for agricultural purposes only. I must tell you that in the estimation of the Department of Ag Resources, the present model in which dogs are allowed to roam feet freely off leash is detrimental to agriculture. My department's legal res responsibility and primary goal is to ensure that the agricultural use of the property is preserved and protected. But we certainly recognize there are many community interests in that piece of property. Uh, the department is very willing to work with interested parties to find a means of accommodation that allows for incidental activities to take place, but at the same time, 
protects the property's use, primary use, that it be used for agriculture. So I know uh, there's a lot of, I, I see a lot of people are here tonight, so I understand that there's a great deal of uh, investment in that property and concern of what goes on with that property. I want to be very clear to you uh, that as far as the Department of Agricultural Resources is concerned, this meeting is not the conclusion of a process, but the opposite. This meeting is the beginning of a process. So what we hope to see develop here among local stakeholders is that the school is going to develop a long-range management plan for agricultural use and then under some uh, model of the school, the city, various stakeholders, uh, develop the proposed plan uh, for these incidental activities that are not detrimental to agriculture. Thank you. I'm going to try to juggle everything I have here. Um, just to reiterate what, what Mr. LeBeau said, we will be making no decisions tonight on what's going to happen with this land. What I would like to see is at the conclusion of the evening, uh, I would like to form a working committee and I would like you folks to choose uh, a leader among your group to serve on a committee to work with us to figure out what we can do with that land. And the commissioner has um, promised to help with that. So uh, if, if you would like to see your dogs being walked, if you would not like to see the dogs being walked, if you would like to play frisbee, if you would like to run, uh, before you leave here tonight, please appoint a spokesperson that will come with me to set up um, a time that we can all meet together and we can get something figured out that will hopefully make everybody happy, which usually ends up making nobody happy, but uh, we're going to try our best to do that. So I'm sure many of you have never seen Burt's Pit Road from the air, okay? But this is an aerial view of all of our parcels of land. Um, right down here is where most of the folks park their vehicles. And uh, of course the community gardens are here. Um, the folks that walk their dogs will enter through here and they generally make this sort of a loop that comes back around. I don't know if that seems familiar to you if you've been down there, but that's, that's the general area of where you're going, all right? Um, these parcels of land have been earmarked for um, uses in the past, and as you may know, we hay a lot of those fields. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go parcel by parcel, and I'm going to tell you what we would like to see down there. Um, H1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Those are those thin areas, and those are visible as you drive by. You can see that on the left. These areas, we hay, and the hay that we uh, reap from that field, we feed our animals with, and if we have an abundance of hay, we sell that hay and we, we make money on that, all right? So that's a very good hay area. Uh, you're gonna see that part of the dogs walk through that hay area. Uh, the problem we have is that tennis ball sticks, feces, wind up in the hay. Uh, that's not good for our horses, and the sticks aren't good for our machines. So th those are the problems that we have on an ongoing basis. Um, H6 is an area that we, that we grow rye, and we use rye for the bedding in our barns, all right, for the bedding in the animals. H7 and H8, H8 is right over here. These are, these are parcels that are actually unfit for farming. Uh, what we do on those parcels, or what we would like to do, is rotary mow, keep it low, and we would like to have uh, uh, those earmarked as wildlife areas, all right? Because there is a lot of wildlife down there. H11. This is the area that you see as you're going down the hill and it slopes down into the, into the, uh, the brook that comes behind. This is where we do, we do a lot of mowing and you'll also see that there, the memorial bench is right up in this area, okay? That's an area that we hay. H12, 13, and 14. Now, we've been working with community members 
renting this out at a very small price for some of the local farmers that really can't afford a big parcel of land. We've been working with local farmers. Um, we are growing uh, buckwheat, soybeans. We've grown pumpkins there, sunflowers in the past. So that's a really good place uh, for us to grow crops. And we hope to continue our work with the community because that's a lot of land that we need help farming, okay, and uh, allowing the community members to come in and use that land. It keeps the soil fertile, and it's a good thing for us and the community. So we're happy about that, and we would like to see that continue. 20 and 21, now this is the area across the street. These are large pastures. We are thinking about first turning our animals out in those pastures, and we are uh, hoping that perhaps some startup farmers that would like to get into farming uh, could rent those lands very, very cheap, and they could graze their animals up there. Again, if you're uh, a young entrepreneur and you want to get into farming, it, it's not cheap to buy good farmland, and we could provide to the community very cheap, very good uh, pasture land for those folks to bring their animals in. So that's something that we're thinking about right now. We're not doing that yet, but it's something that we have been talking about. So the, again, excuse me, this is the land across the street, and uh, we also use this for haying. So we do a lot of haying up there, and we don't have a lot of activity across the street, but uh, we do a lot of haying up there, and that's very important to what we do here. We have a large um, uh, herd of cattle. We have about 30 heads of cattle. We have horses. We have lambs. We have pigs. So that hay for us is like gold for us, and, and we need it to be viable and clean and, and safe for those animals. So that is our potential land usage plan, okay? Again, nothing has been decided. Uh, the decision what we do with this land is not up to me at all. Uh, but I will come up with a plan, and I will present it to the Board of Trustees. The Board of Trustees will vote if that plan is, is acceptable to them, and then it has to go to the state of Massachusetts, and they have to approve, ultimately approve the land, okay? So that's where I'm looking to go with the land. Uh, you know, we have this land down there, I wanna use it. We're talking about having a sustainable food and agriculture program here at our school. We wanna expand our offerings in agriculture, uh, and, and that's a great spot for us to do that. And, you know, we're talking about growing all kinds of crops down there, and it, it, again, good for the community. So that's my vision for the land, but at this point, I, I would love to hear what you think the land should be used for. And once again, when you're all done, uh, I would like to remind you that I wanna form a committee and we will talk after the meeting about when we can meet next to talk about what we are gonna do with this land. Uh, if I could have folks one or two at a time line up at the podium, don't everybody run at once, but uh, if we could have one person go up to the podium and have no more than two people behind, and then as the next person goes up, somebody could walk around to the back and get in line, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, I'm Tom Gagnon from Florence on Ryan Road. I have a question. At the intersection of Burt's Pit Road and Florence Road, going north on Florence Road, about 300 yards, there's a sign there that says underwater, underwater ground reserve for the city of Northampton. My question is, are we potentially allowing our underground water to be contaminated by years use of the land up there the way it's being used now? Um, I think Tom's um, issue was with dog feces on all the land and, and the concentration of dog feces, but over an aquifer. But we do spread cow manure over that too. I don't. I don't think it impacts it as much as you might think. I don't think it impacts it at all. I, my name is Susan Grant. My husband Don Grant and I um, put on a series of cross country races on the property on Burt's Pit Road, and have done so since 1987. Uh, which I think is 29 years, if my arithmetic is correct. Uh, he would be here tonight, except tonight the race is going on, so he's over there and, and I'm here in his uh, stead, so to speak. We have provided a focus for fun and fitness for people all over the Pioneer Valley since 1987, and we have personal records of over 6,000 individuals who have run the races. Our current record holder for most races is Jim Farrick of Northampton. He has run it 400, 546 times. We average 75 runners a week. 
we hope to continue to hold these races on this property. The races were initiated with the permission and approval of the man who was then the head of Smith Vocational School, Francis McGrath, the then mayor of Northampton, David Miasanti, and the then head of Northampton Parks and Recreation, Ray Ellerbrook. We collaborate with the Northampton Community Gardeners to provide a porta potty for visitors to the property. And we have also bought and installed two large picnic tables, which are available for the use of all the visitors. We provide a large scale map permanently posted near the race area. In combination with 32 trail signs, which my husband personally painted and installed and maintains, um, the map and the tr signs allow any visitor to walk, run, or ski an accurate 3.1 mile course. This was um, done under the official guidelines of US track and field. Um, our runners use only the established roads and trails on this property. We do not intrude on any fields or pastures or meadows. We do not throw any items into these fields. We do not create obstacles or hurdles on the property. I attached um, a map uh, which uh, shows you the outline of exactly where the course goes. Our race is supported by Sugarloaf Mountain Athletic Club a club that exists with the mission of promoting running for children and adults throughout our area. We support Sugarloaf's mission by making entry to our races free for runners under 18, and we have many of those. We maintain a record board that lists the best times for runners by age. Currently, our youngest is the age five record held by Kimberly Beaver of Agawam, and our age 86 record, which is held by Ray Willis of Charlemont. We see a need to post leash law signs on the property for the safety of all, and especially children. No state-owned land in Massachusetts allows dogs to run off leash except in fenced areas. This property does not qualify as a dog park, although I have heard it labeled that. It has no fences. It has no posted regulations about cleanup of pet waste and it has no leash law signs. Such signs are prominently posted on the nearby area devoted to the community gardens. Adding such signs to the property where our race course lies will help protect the safety of agricultural workers and also runners and all visitors to this beautiful property. Thank you. Well, I'm Gene Riley, I live in Northampton, and I would just like to emphasize that that Tuesday race between April and September is truly a community event. I would like to emphasize that the Tuesday race is a community event. I see my neighbors there. They come with their children. Those children grow up and now I've seen some of the grandchildren. I've also met hundreds of other people that live in Northampton who I see on a regular basis when I go downtown now. And there are some runners over here tonight, and there would be many more if this meeting was on another night of the week because they're all out there running on Tuesday. Thank you very much. Um, hi, my name's Tom Riddell. I live in Northampton on Aldrich Street. Um, I'm retired faculty and dean at Smith College. I've taught a course at Smith for first year students for over 10 years on the history of the Northampton State Hospital and a number of the students, a large number of the students who've taken that class are very interested in the fact that the agricultural lands that we're discussing, one section of them anyway, is the site of a burial ground um, from Northampton State Hospital. During its first 70 years of operation, a lot of the patients who died there and whose families did not claim them or had been lost touch with, um, were buried at the hospital. At least um, about 200 um, confirmed burials and possibly up to 600 ex-patients, former patients, are buried there. Um, as Superintendent Peterson mentioned, there is a, a bench um, at, at that site. Um, 
the students and I, and I'm also on the Northampton State Hospital Memorial Committee. Um, I think that one of the things that uh, the community needs to pay attention to and to respect is that some of these lands do contain a burial ground and for all of the users of the property, I think it's important that there's more recognition and more information about that fact. Good evening. I'm Sue Crimmins. I have um, a little house on 254 Spring Street, and I'm a dog walker. And uh, I think this is a really valuable site to take our dogs and let them walk unleashed. Um, I'm a very responsible dog owner, and I have a dog that is a therapy dog. He's an agility dog. He's been to training classes, and he's not a couch potato at all. And he needs these areas like this remote, out of the way, not near roads. And truthfully, I think whenever I go to this site, I access the Mill River mostly. And I, and I think that most of the dog walkers are accessing the Mill River to get down there on hot summer days, let their dogs swim, convene, socialize, those types of things, which is very, very healthy for dogs and people alike. So I'm in support of the dog park, continuing as the dog park. And my advice and suggestion would be that I think we need to have a garbage can out there, um, a poop bag uh, station like they have at all of the other state parks. Um, they have it at Fitzgerald Lake. They have it up on Mount Sugarloaf. They have it up in Chesterfield at the Gorge. They have them all over. And I think it's be a very useful thing and a useful way of spending money. Thanks. Good evening. My name is James Lowenthal. I live in Northampton. I am a very regular uh, user of the, um, the area we're talking about. Um, I'm one of the regular Tuesday night runners. Um, I cross-country ski there in the wintertime. Um, I go bird watching there in the early mornings. Um, I work at Smith College, and it's uh, wonderful to be able to, to go there uh, just by foot so easily. Um, I am in strong favor of uh, keeping the area uh, open to runners as it is now. Um, I will say that I've been bitten by dogs twice there, um, both times while I was cross-country skiing. Um, I uh, consequently wrote a letter to the editor of, of the Gazette um, complaining about the, the lack of civility of, I'm sure it's uh, a small number of, of dog owners. I'm a dog owner myself, so I don't mean to, uh, to um, issue blanket statements about dog owners, but I will say um, that there are enough problems uh, that it's severely impacted my own uh, feeling of uh, safety when I go there. Now when I go there, I look at every single dog and I think, is it going to happen again? Is it going to happen again? Am I going to get bitten again? What does that dog look at me for? And my letter unleashed, I cannot tell you, countless responses from people, both publicly and privately, um, the great majority of them in support. I would say nine out of 10 were in support of my view that something needs to be done to control the situation of uh, the, the conflicts between um, dogs off leash and the, um, I think, um, respectful and peaceful use of the property by, by all others. Um, and I will also say, um, I have read, I am not an expert on this, but I have read that significant portions of water pollution do come from uh, dog feces. And I think before we dismiss that possibility, we should actually look into it and, and consult the scientific record. Um, it's well known that the Mill River is often in excess of acceptable coliform bacteria, and there are no swimming signs posted there. I think it's, it would be in our, all of our best interest to understand um, where that comes from. And, um, and if a significant amount is from dogs, then, then we should do something about that. Thank you. Hi. My name is Christina Peterson, and I've submitted these remarks to uh, the mayor and Mr. Peterson and Barbara Hobson. But if you don't mind, I'm just going to read them. I've lived in a property abutting the state land for about 30 years now, so I've seen a big cycle move from very active, productive agricultural land where you grew, where you grew crops and also um, pastured animals to um, a place that's used primarily by people. So I'm very excited that you're putting together a plan to use the land again for agriculture. I organized the first public discussion about this topic in the late 1990s, and we held several meetings to address the skyrocketing use of the land by dog walkers. The meetings were attended by runners, dog walkers, and Smith Folk staff, and mediated by an active dog walker. 
The majority of the attendees were dog walkers, and I believe that Ms. Hobson attended one of the meetings. The first was held in City Hall, and subsequent meetings were held at Smith Vogue. A decision was made by group's consensus to adhere to the following set of self-imposed and self-regulated rules. The only time constraint on dog walkers would be during the Tuesday night running races. All dogs must be on leashes in the parking lot and in the community garden area. Only dogs that could be controlled by voice command should be allowed to be off leash. Dogs and owners should stay on the trails at all times so that agricultural activities could continue and wildlife could be protected. And finally, if dog walkers witness violent behavior by a dog, they would approach the owner and ask them not to bring the dog to the area. Since that time, use of the area by dog walkers has at least quadrupled. I live nearby and use the trails for running, so I'm the daily witness. Disc offers now have been added, and people are regularly parking farther up Burt's Pit Road and accessing the trails from two points. I think the old rules that we put together are pretty reasonable. All users would be able to continue to use the area, but people and dogs must stay on the trails. Smith folk could tape off the new desire paths that have been created, and the number of trails could be reduced. This would alleviate the erosion and soil compaction taking place near the parking area and in the area where people swim their dogs. It would also help to bring back the foxes that used to den in that area and the ground nesting birds whose populations have taken a real beating with the dogs running wild. I would be very happy to contribute towards the fundraising for a real dog park, like I have seen in Burlington, Vermont. I wonder if the newly mowed area across the road at the bottom of the drumlin would be a good place. Well, uh, you, you talked about pasturing animals there, so I guess that's out. Perhaps users could park in the lot built for the playing field. No matter what happens, I hope it will be mandatory that all dog poop be removed and taken home in a plastic bag. There are regularly 100 dogs a day there, and I rarely see people carrying bags. The poop is on the trails, and it's disgusting, blah, blah, blah. You've heard it before. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everybody. People sitting in front of me and everyone else that's here tonight. My name is Raymond Willis. I live in Charlemont, Massachusetts. I understand the uh, hay raising. I raise four acres of hay myself and uh, the little other part about the farming. My property abuts, I don't know if you've read, but probably you have the Hallamont Regional School and their farm program, how they've dedicated practically all their learning, mixed it in with farming and whatever. So I have animals next to me in, in, the, in my, uh, my, abutting my property. And also I always gave, I used to get a gallon of syrup each year for my hay, but now I get a little bit more, okay? But that's it. Anyway, I've been running the, the races in uh, Bird Pitts Road now for many, many, many years. You said there was a little blurb in the sheet there that somebody by, somebody by my name is 76 years old, but don't believe him. Uh, uh, I, do hold the, I do hold records on the course because I've been running there for so many years. Uh, most of my records have already been broken, but now I hold record number 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, and 86. And I would hope that I know the way the people treat the uh, property there, the runners. The Grants have done a wonderful job over the years, and I'm just here to support them. I'm here to support all the runners that are here. Uh, when we go to the races on Tuesday night, uh, some of us go out and have a pre-run, and if there's anything on the track, on the course that needs moving, whether it's sticks or other things that have been mentioned, mentioned that's taken care of before the race. So we're very, very, uh, into keeping the fields and the track and everything else uh, the way it should be. And uh, I just hope that for many years to come, uh, I think I, I, one thing I like to do is I try to set an example for a lot of the young kids that are running there. Some of them, you've seen one that's five or six years old. There's many teenagers. And then I also like to try to set some kind of an example for the people that are in their older ages so they get up to into the what my age is, that we can still be out there running. And I know there's several people from the Northampton area 
that, that would just love to be there and do that and keep running right up through until whatever. So I thank you very kindly for listening to me and uh, good luck to our committee and the committee you form. And we just kind of hope that things go our way and that we are able to continue our races there with the grants on Tuesday nights. Thank you very much. My name is Jonathan Goldman. I am a senior across the street at Northampton High School. I'm going to take us on a little bit different of a gear. Uh, we actually, me and my partner, Diana Riddle, we've been working together for about the past year at looking at the possibility of bringing composting back to Northampton. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with that, but there used to be compost in Northampton, and it was a pretty uh, big program. And I've been looking at trying to see how that can happen again. Um, we've talked with the board here, the board of trustees at the Smith Vocational High School, uh, also different staff are sort of seeing if that's possible. Um, the land that we're looking at to actually have something like that happen is not where most people are walking. It's actually across uh, where people, where uh, Mr. Peterson talked about uh, possibly having grazing or leasing it out to other farmers. and. We're proposing to try and find out a way to turn that into composting. Uh, we're a pretty relatively uh, big city uh, for our area, and there are also countless, countless restaurants that we have throughout Northampton. We have well over 100 uh, food producing areas, and this would be beneficial to them. Uh, it would also uh, contribute to the recent ban, the food waste ban in Massachusetts, um, and it would address that in our city. And obviously, after having that happen, we can assume that there's going to be uh, more stringent uh, regulations that are going to come through and it is in our best interest to take advantage of that and bring composting into Northampton, figure out a way that it works for everyone there. Uh, we uh, did a report that hopefully we're going to be releasing later on this week. We are going to be talking at City Council um, and figuring out uh, what is the, the, the best place way to implement it. Uh, working with Smith Boak and working with the state. Um, and we also have outlined several ways that can be approached and found that it would, in, in the area that we have, this would be extremely economically beneficial um, for our city and for our residents. And uh, we hope that even though this is a little bit different from what most people are thinking about right now, uh, it's definitely a, a possibility and something really great for our city. Uh, and we hope that everyone here can consider that and find maybe a way to work together to actually bring composting back to Northampton as well. Thank you. Hello. My name is Benjamin Spencer. I live on Rust Avenue, which is right in the neighborhood of the um, fields we're discussing. There's a couple things I just wanted to mention. Um, one of them is, um, I guess no matter what happens, it'd be nice to address the parking. Um, in the wintertime, when the parking area isn't plowed, people park on the streets, and it creates a very hazardous uh, situation. Um, people are letting their dogs in and out of their cars. The streets are already narrow. They're pulling up on the side. So if there is some way to sort of make that parking area official and uh, see it get plowed, um, I think it would just make it much safer. And uh, also on Tuesday nights, when the races are taking place, all of Bird's Pit is lined with cars, and people are not always paying attention to what they're doing. And um, I when I can commute to my job in Florence by bicycle and uh, go home that way. And um, it's, again, um, if there was parking uh, off the street, that would make a much safer situation. And I think that one suggestion I would have is to um, let the runners know that there is a tremendous amount of parking not far away in the new uh, Ellerbrook ball fields um, where I'm sure everybody could park and it's a very quick jog to the walking trails. And, um, and then also I'm just curious to know if there's ever any sort of uh, policing that goes on on these grounds um, to just make sure that people are uh, sort of already complying with the rules that people have laid out. Um, just something to think about. And uh, I also support the idea of a doggy bag station and a ba you know, barrel that gets collected um, regularly. It would just improve the experience for everybody. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jody Hutlinger. I'm a Smith Boak alum. I graduated last year. Um, I'm a big dog walker in the Bird's Pit community. Um, I live pretty close by, and I want to say how much I support uh, the agriculture. I was in the agricultural program, and I support them haying. I was thinking that maybe you could uh, donate some of the land over to the dog park um, and fence off the um, 
than that you want to use for hay. Um, again, everyone loves the dog park. It's become a big part of Northampton. Thanks. Good evening. My name is Suzanne DeSessa, and I know you've heard from a lot of the runners, but I'm here to exercise my voice about that as well. Um, I want to support 29 years of volunteer community service that Don and Sue Grant have provided to the running community. I also want to um, support children and families getting out and exercising together. I'm an educator. I've been an elementary school teacher for 32 years, and it does my heart good when I can can go to a race on a Tuesday night and see young boys and girls trying to outkick, the, outkick their mom and dad at the finish line. Um, we all know that um, too many children are not getting physical activity. It affects them um, mentally and physically for their life. So when I go out and see families exercising together in um, a beautiful setting where I think we're hearing lots of good ideas for how to share the land and protect it. I'm very excited to uh, know that you see a process here, that you're going to develop a committee, and I think you have lots of intelligent people that are willing to participate in that and make the best use of the land. Thanks very much. Hi, my name's Alex Gieselin. I live uh, on Riverside Drive. Um, and I want to start by thanking very much the organizers of this uh, conversation. It's long overdue. It's kind of stuttered along in the background, and I, I really appreciate gaining, getting this group of people who are all crucial to the future of this land. Um, I'm also a member of the Bay State Village Association, and we have for a long time advocated in kind of a low-level way another crossing, a pedestrian and bike crossing of Mill River that would link the high school to the rapidly increasing population center at Village Hill. And I think most routes would probably cross some part of the agricultural land. Uh, it's a long-term plan that needs lots of money, but uh, if we don't get started in that conversation, we will we'll never get there. And I think it would be uh, an enormous asset to my part of town to be able to have access to the state land and to be able to um, uh, to link to the to Hospital Hill. Thank you. Hi, my name is Phil Bricker. I live in Northampton. Uh, I want to advocate for a maximal openness and use of the land. Um, I probably use it more than anybody because I am a dog walker. I'm there every day, and I'd like to, um, under appropriate rules, allow that to continue. I'm an avid runner. I've done the 5K Tuesday night race over a hundred times. I think it's very important to continue that for the community. But I'm mainly here for um, a use that most of you probably know nothing about. About five years ago, I made a detailed orienteering map of the area. Um, every boulder, every rootstock, every sign is on the map. Uh, vegetation thickness is shown in three shades of green. If anyone wants to see an example, I can show it to you. And we've used it um, a couple times for race orienteering races. People from all over New England have come. They know the area under the name Cemetery Hill. And uh, it's a favorite area for some people to come do orienteering. We've also used it a lot just for very informal training sessions, including one last week that this is from. And it's a fantastic area to teach orienteering. It's a small area, lots of trails. Um, the orienteering takes place in the woods and on the trails. It doesn't affect the agricultural land. In fact, we only do it uh, because the vegetation gets thick in the early spring and late fall when there really isn't any cultivation going on. So uh, along with all the other activities people have spoken of, I want to encourage to be able to continue to do orienteering on this land. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Sanjay Arawadi from Amherst, uh, and I'd like first to thank you guys for having this hearing and uh, say that I appreciate the challenges you face in managing intensive use of this land by many different user groups. It's a difficult problem that you face. Um, the cross-country running race on Tuesday nights is an integral part of the community. Uh, I've been in the area for 10 years now. When I try to get people to move to the area, it's one of the things I always talk about. And when I tell people how wonderful it is to live in the area, it's always one of the things that I talk about. Opportunities in today's society for people from the age of five to 70, 80, and sometimes even above, to get together in an informal, low, and, and sometimes no-cost environment and enjoy themselves outdoors are very rare. 
and I urge you to do everything you can to preserve that opportunity for the local community. I hope also that you'll be careful in trying to differentiate between the different uh, user groups of the area, recreational user groups of the area, the runners, uh, the orienteers, uh, which have much in common, the dog walkers who use leashes assiduously and the dog walkers who choose not to use leashes assiduously. Uh, they each have very different impacts on the land and very different modes of use and uh, records of behavior, I would say. And I'd like to close by saying that Don and Sue Grant have provided over the last uh, almost three decades now, uh, along with their volunteers and the Sugarloaf, Mount Sugarloaf Mountain Athletic Club, a, a perfect example of how people can use land in ways that are fun, recreational, healthy, and yet consistent with the enjoyment of other users of the land. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Jim Clayton. I've been in the community 33 years as a dentist. Uh, I've had a lot of roles in the community. Um, I run a Sugarloaf Youth Athletic Program with 300 athletes all summer long. Uh, many of them use the community gardens as a training area. Um, I was the high school track and cross country coach for 10 or 11 years, and the high school uses that area for their competitive cross country races. So not only do we use that land for the Grants race, which is probably the best thing that I've seen in my 40 years of running in the United States, but we use it as a high school competitive area. And it is, um, we have records listing for the last 20 years of athletes that have run on that course and we'd hate to see that disappear. Um, I use this land for everything. I have a dog, I run with my dog, I walk with my dogs, they're getting older now. Um, I appreciate the community gardens that are out there, I appreciate the farming that's out there. I've seen this land go from, uh, as uh, Mrs. Rayton said, the, uh, or Mrs. Peterson, excuse me, um, a well agricultured area to one that has kind of gone fallow and hopefully will come back. I've seen a pumpkin field down there that's gone unhar unharvested, to my knowledge. Uh, we went down there and borrowed some pumpkins as they were rotting in the field. But what I'm trying to say is that this multi-purpose land is so valuable and we need to find a way to make it multi-purpose and keep it multi-purpose. I believe that we should have dogs, we should have running, we should have farming, and somehow with 200 and some odd acres that we're talking about, there should be a way to figure out how this can be done. Um, one other thing I want to say is that there used to be a water monitoring area in the river with a large cement structure. That area is, was a state structure. There is erosion behind that state structure. It is cavitating an entire hill near the cross-country courses. As the track coach, I was worried about this thing falling into the river. It silts up Smith College, uh, their Paradise Pond. Um, so something needs to be done with erosion. There's also tons of dead trees out there, and there's a lot of vines and Virginia creeper and other things that have come in. I would love to see the land managed by a forestry person to plant, stop erosion, work with the agriculture, and to make this a total multi-purpose use land. Um, as far as trail maintenance, I've gone out there personally. We've taken machinery from the high school and fixed the trails. Smith College routinely does that, and they use this also as a racing area for about four cross-country meets every season. Uh, it's invaluable. I lived in New Jersey. There's no dog walking park within 25 miles of where my father lives in New Jersey. Uh, I love this area. My children come back from college, and they take the dog for a run or go out there. It's just probably one of the gems of Northampton and of the state of Massachusetts. Thank you. Hello, my name is David Whitcomb. I'm from Worthington. Uh, and I am impressed with uh, both dog walkers and the running communi community. Uh, the dog walkers, I, I would like to say I've been bitten once, but not at Burt's Pit Road. Uh, and I was wearing a glove and it didn't bother me. Um, I have had uh, very few uh, run-ins with, with dogs. Uh, they're usually very well behaved, so I, it's, it's not my uh, wish to see them um, taken care of. Uh, uh, it's hopefully that, that they stay. Um, I would like to also add that I have three children that uh, have pretty good work ethics, and uh, it's through sports. And running is 
according to me anyway, the foundation of all athletics. If you don't run, you're not going to be a very good athlete. That Burt's Pit Road area is an excellent place, and it's well maintained by most of us. I have brought my chainsaw there and uh, cut a tree because it had fallen. Uh, most people are very considerate and uh, do their part to maintain that area. Thank you. Yeah, hi, I'm Carl Signoni. I live in uh, Chesterfield. I work in Northampton. And I've been running the Tuesday night races there for probably close to 20 years. And I believe it's, um, it's a wonderful thing. It's a great community resource. And um, I also don't see it having any adverse effect on agriculture, but I think it would have a pretty positive effect. I believe when people come in to do the um, either running or uh, the disc golf, and the other recreational things there, and they see the agriculture going on, it's gonna help people learn more about it and then be able to support it. You know, whether it's supporting it in their home communities or supporting it politically, it would be a good thing to, um, to kind of raise everyone's consciousness about the importance of farming and agriculture. So I think um, kind of continuing with the recreational use and, and agriculture and the growth of that would be a really good thing. Uh, thank you. My name is Deb Jacobs, and I live in the Yankee Hill section of Leeds. Uh, I think the plan for um, agriculture that the superintendent um, uh, introduced us with is very exciting. Um, I think one of the real challenges that agriculture has is that there isn't enough land. So I think that um, this is a great way of looking at things. Um, I think also uh, involving the community uh, in terms of farming is great. We don't all have dogs, we don't all run, but we all have to eat. Thank you. I'm uh, Catherine Stout. I'm a community gardener. I've been a community gardener at the Northampton Community Garden since 1984. Um, I was on the garden committee for nine years. I was a co-chair for two years um, in the 1980s. Um, I'm trying to campaign now to have the Northampton Community Garden be as organic as the Florence Community Garden. Uh, we have a few people that uh, use pesticide there, which I don't think is safe, and I don't want to have that happen anymore. But uh, most of the gardeners are organic. I've been there long enough to know many of them. And um, I'm interested in um, Smith Vocational considering doing organic farming on their land. Um, and I think this, I mean, this whole area has been an incredibly rich, biodiverse area. We have Audubon um, thinks of it as a prime birding area. It's, um, we have bats, we have peeper frogs, we have a whole lot of wildlife that lives there and that coexists with all these people. And you know, I think of it as an, a, both an ecosystem and a community, a human community and an ecosystem. And I, I want to see it continue that way and even be more that way. And I think you know, getting rid of any toxic chemicals would be a, an important part of that. And, um, and also preserving the history that of the state hospital, the people that were buried there, I think they deserve to be treated with dignity, even though the state will not release their names, you know, um, that we need to somehow honor the fact that there are graves there and respect that. Hi, I'm Nick Warren. I live up in the Village Hill area, the new development. Uh, thanks again to all of you for putting, putting this together. I think a lot of good ideas have come up this afternoon, this evening. Um, it, and all of them, almost on the face of it, um, look to be fairly good ideas. 
uh, non-intrusive uses, non-invasive uses of this of this space. I'm not sure if we're in if we're involved in an exercise in futility, given uh, Mr. Lebeau's description of what we're actually supposed to be doing here, on the assumption that we're not engaged in such an exercise, and there is some way to get a multi-use of, of this uh, area. To me, it seems that the only problem that comes out of this of this meeting is a problem of behavior. And it's human behavior and it's dog behavior. And those are the two things which give us the most problems here. And dogs do what they do, so it's primarily human behavior. I think what I've found in walking through there with a very small dog is that the small dog uh, does not do well with large dogs that are unleashed and unrestrained. I think it must be very upsetting to the people who do use the dog walk uh, and feel that their dogs are under good verbal control to find that there are other people, it's a small number of people who do not have good control of their of their dogs, and worse, can be very unhappy if you happen to bring this to their uh, their attention. Seems to me the only way that you can do this is to have the poop bags and to have a leash law. Um, unfortunately, for those who like to have free-ranging dogs, if you can have a separate dog park, that'd be great. I'm not sure if that's a possibility or not. The problem that we have with human behavior, this is what it is, is who's going to enforce these rules? It's happened before. We have rules, we have regulations, we have at least suggestions. But what happens is that the dog park seems to be a race to the bottom. That what happens is people who come there and are uh, injured by or um, uh, confronted by other dogs or little dogs get offended, get hurt or whatever, those people leave. And who's left is the people who are, um, again, a small number, but who are causing, causing problems. Um, I think in the end, the dog behavior piece we all have to understand is that small dog, is that dogs who are leashed are at a disadvantage in this kind of a situation if there are unleashed dogs. The dogs who are leashed don't get to do doggy stuff, what they do when they are confronted by an unleashed, possibly aggressive, and maybe even playful dog. So eventually, those dogs are gonna get hurt, they're gonna leave. So in the end, just to repeat, it's an issue of behavior. Unfortunately, it's an issue of regulation. And how are we going to enforce the types of um, uh, rules, behavioral rules, which we can come up with, I think, as a, as a group? How would we actually do that? Stan Pollock uh, from Florence. I'm a dog walker and a dog trainer. Um, just curious, how many people are dog walkers who are here tonight? Thank you. How many people are runners? Impressive. How many people out of all of the groups who are here would like to see a multi-use um, property that we have been calling the dog park? The, uh, how many people would like to see it be multi-use? Okay. So I just thought we'd bring things into perspective about who is here and what their interests are. Um, uh, the commissioner mentioned in 1983 that it was designated as an agricultural use only. Uh, what is preventing the Department of Agriculture, or whatever its term is these days, to um, make, change the designation and make it a multi-use? designation. Um, a number of people have uh, talked about um, uh, regulation, um, self-policing has been one of the things that we came up with. I was part of that uh, group that met over 15 years ago um, with, and there were runners, there were skiers, there were bikers, there were dog walkers, there were um, bird lovers, etc. We all got together and formed different committees and came up with some very good um, ideas, uh, but it requires self-policing. Um, if you see an activity that uh, you don't think is right, mention it to the person. If they don't respond in a positive way, uh, make note of that and uh, contact. We, we had a contact for Barbara Dotson, uh, and uh, if uh, she was contacted and the person didn't uh, respond to that, you could have a no trespass 
against that person, keep them out of the area. Uh, I've been walking dogs, uh, both my own and others that I've been training for many, many years. I've seen one incident of aggressive behavior uh, and that person had an Akita. I approached the person, I said, if you don't get your dog under control, put your dog on a leash, um, you're gonna be uh, banned from the area. Never saw the dog again. Um, so anyway, I, th I think that if we work together and if the commissioner and all of the staff are, um, are interested in harmony and community support, uh, we can develop a multi-use uh, area for uh, this parcel. Uh, let's see, I made some notes here. I think I covered most of them. Um, thank you very much and um, keep up the good work. Uh, hello, I'm Norman Spurnell from Amherst. I'm here to support the uh, 5K cross country. I'm a new runner, about a year and a half. Uh, it was my first local race. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, my wife, my family frequent it. We volunteered there. Um, my wife and, you know, and sons, uh, Tyler who's eight, Sage who is six, they're running the race right now. So. I think they're close to being done, I hope. If they do, then the six-year-old might have a uh, personal best, but uh, I'd like to see it continue, so thank you. Hi, my name's Teresa Collins, and I'm here um, representing Smith College Athletics. We use the field, um, or part of the trails, twice a year in the fall for our, cr our cross-country events. And uh, I think for about, I've been there 26 years, for about the last 20 years, I've had permission to um, take care of the trails um, from the superintendent. I'm sure Mr. Peterson hasn't given it to me because I think your former superintendents wrote me a letter because I would bother them every fall to ask if we could clean up the trails and cut some brush down and do some fills. And he finally was sick of me calling him and just saying, I'm writing a letter that will give you a standing okay over the years to take care of the trails um, that are involved with the Smith um, races. So I'm just hoping that we can continue to run our races. And um, is there anything that we can do to help out? Please let us know. My name's Yoha Ralph. I'm a resident of Northampton. And I'd like to be here to advocate for my dogs who can't. And uh, they're very joyous when they get to run off leash. And I, my dogs have not attacked anyone. I've had four dogs over the last 15 years. And I'd like to continue allowing them to run off leash. I run with them. The Mill River area is one of the only places to get a dip in the hot summer in Northampton. And one of the things that I've watched is the erosion of green space due to development. It was very sad to me to see Hospital Hill turn into a development. And I'd really like to be able to continue to run and swim and walk out at the dog park. One of the uh, consequences if we were to lose that space is it'll force people to drive their cars to Mount Tom, to Amethyst Brook, and it'll con uh, contribute to carbon emissions and things like that. So I'd really like to see green space for Northampton residents preserved. Hello, I'm Elisa, I live near Smith College, and I own a small sustainable gardening business, so I'm excited to see what sustainable farming happens, that's great. Um, I also have a puppy, he's a little blind guy, and I can tell you the dog park, as many dogs, I'm sure, it's his favorite place in the world, and I honestly think I don't know what I would do without it, because he, you know, <sighs> Sometimes running around and playing with other dogs is the only thing that really tires him out, and that's true of a lot of people and their dogs. And uh, I'll tell you, since going there, you know, sometimes when it's winter, it's below zero, it's pouring rain, the hardcore dog people are always there because they value it so much. And um, it's a great place, and I think we can work together because I totally agree. The could be much cleaner. I would love to see efforts done to help with that. If it could be more of an official dog park and still 
used for farming and, of course, running, because we all need exercise, including dogs and people. That would be great, and I would love to work on that. Thanks. Hi, my name is Jason Johnson. I'm uh, the co-founder of the disc golf course at uh, Hospital Hill in the property. Um, we started there in 2002 um, with a verbal agreement to yield to agricultural use, to not impact agriculture, um, to have a pack-in, pack-out policy, and to be self-policing. And for the last 12 years, this has been a really successful program. We have, um, I would say, probably 50 to 100 users there a day, um, on average in good weather. There's been disc golf outreach programs in the schools. It's widely used by um, the local area because it's one of the places where you can play for free. Um, I have a degree in watershed and wetland restoration, so it was specifically designed to be have erosion control elements to it to protect wildlife areas, and we made a really specific attempt to remove invasive species and continue to manage invasive species. And if you walk through some of those areas, you can look in the adjacent um, piece of land and see it covered with multi-fora rose and Japanese knotweed and Asiatic bittersweet. And so this, again, has been sort of a successful merging of a recreational program uh, that also meets agricultural and um, state level goals of, of trying to control invasive species. Um, we've had an ongoing relationship with the vocational high school. Um, they all have my number. If there's any problems that come up, we get a call. Um, we provide scorecards, which has detailed information for each of the users. And again, you know, it's a yield to other users, pack in, pack out, be responsible for yourself and be a respectful steward of the place. So um, I'll be the representative for the disc golf community um, for, this, for the committee, and we're really excited to work with you. Hello, my name is Brigitte Holt. I live in Florence, and I'm a dog walker. Um, it's a small dog, it's a little Westie. And I've been walking at the so-called dog park for about a year and a half, and we were there at least six, seven times uh, a week. And it's a gem, like somebody said. This park is a wonderful place. Uh, and in my mind, what makes this area uh, worth living in, in the way that I've, I've been here 10 years, and I have found this area very lonely, um, hard to meet people, and the dog park has changed my life. Um, I have found a spirit of community, of civility, of friendship. I have made friends there um, while my, my dog is happily running and bouncing around, uh, socializing as dogs should be uh, doing. Um, and, and I have made these friends that I never had before. And it, it's just something to look forward to in a way that I never looked forward to before. Um, there are many recreational venues uh, in this area for many different groups of people, which is great. Uh, people with children can go to parks for children. Uh, people can go to the movies. People can uh, bird watch, which is something I enjoy doing as well. Uh, they can go to Audubon. They can kayak. Uh, there's wildlife preserves, um, lots of wonderful places, bookstores, uh, uh, libraries, uh, sidewalk cafes, restaurants. I can't go to any of these with my dog. I'm out. And having a dog is not an exotic pastime. Uh, as, as the, uh, the popularity of the dog park um, attests, um, having a dog is a very popular thing to do. There's a good reason. They're good companions. Now, not everybody wants to have a dog, but those of us who do, most of us want to see our dogs run around. And I have found um, a, a level of civility at the dog park. Sure, there are probably people who aren't as careful as they should be. But the other day I was there with my dog and there was a group of people running up the hill, down the hill, up there. I don't know why they would do such a thing. It's a great thing that they enjoyed. But I held my dog by the collar. I let them go by and they appreciated it and they thanked me. And I was glad to be able to do that. So I hope that, and I really, really thank you for being willing to listen to all the different um, uh, stakeholders. Uh, and at least we think we are. And, uh, and I hope that we can find a way to share that, that wonderful space. Thank you.
Hi, um, my name is Tracy McNeil. I live in East Hampton, and I think this is the first time I've ever spoken to a mic. Um, I think the dog people are, in general, a little bit shyer, because I, I see a lot out there who are not coming up here. But um, I've been walking at the dog park, or, you know, the, the area we're talking about, for about 20 years. And um, I just want to say how important it has been to my life. Um, and how much, you know, having dogs in my life and animals in general are very important. And it is one of the only places that we are able to let dogs, hopefully well-behaved dogs. I've actually, I've never been bitten by a dog. I've never had any trouble with other dogs. And it saddens me to hear the stories. Um, but it is one of the only places that dogs can run. And that's really important for dogs. It's really important for people to be out on the trails walking. And not everybody can run. Um, we see people out there every single day throughout every type of weather with their animals. People of all abilities um, are getting out there and walking. And walking is so important to emotional, physical, mental health, and it saddens me so much to think that that might be restricted. Um, and I wish, I wish there were more dog walkers <laughs> represented, and I think the runners are a little bit more disciplined and organized. Um, but I just want to say that I think we're all willing to work and do what we can to make this area stay um, as open to everybody as we possibly can. Thank you. Hi, my name is John Shefflin, and I live in Florence. And again, I want to thank you all for your patience and listening to all the different viewpoints here and, and everybody else who's here. Uh, I used to be a runner. You know, Boston Marathon, 10 times. Used to train on the cross-country course. Used to run at the races that Sue Grant won. Well, a few years ago, uh, when I was 70, uh, Dr. Curtis was looking at my left knee and said, John, you want the good news or the bad news? And he said, the good news is I don't want to operate. The bad news is I don't want you to run anymore. So what do I do now? I take my dog to the same place I used to run, and it's a wonderful community of people, dog lovers, and uh, I think more, probably more people there know my dog's name than know my name, even though it's a pretty simple name, John. Uh, but, you know, my dog will go running in. Oh, there's Dulce, uh, Spanish for sweet, and uh, actually she is a sweet dog. And I, I guess the thing is now, as I'm approaching the age of 80, unfortunately I can't be running like Mr. Willis does, and uh, I really take my hat off to him. But I walk there, and I think that's one of the things that really keeps me going. And the trails are rough, so as, a, as an elder, it helps my balance, it helps my fitness, and the dog is so happy to be, see her friends and run around with them. And I think, you know, we have to respect the agricultural use. And there's got to be a way we can do it. And uh, in terms of managing the trails, and maybe we shouldn't walk on that top trail, you know, with our dogs where the hay is. And. Uh, <laughs> I just hope we can all find a way to work together and so that all the uses can continue because it is a community gem here for not only Northampton, but for Massachusetts. I mean, people come from other communities with their dogs, with their running shoes, with their skis, with their mountain bikes, with their discs, and uh, it's, a, it's a great thing. It's a community treasure, and to be used for sustainable agriculture is awesome. So I just hope we can continue along these lines. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Ziam, and uh, I work with dogs. Um, and I apologize, because I'm almost about to throw up. I'm not very good at speaking, so bear with me if I babble. Um, one of the, one of the things I've noticed is 
communication is extremely important. So I appreciate and I thank you all for opening up a dialogue that's much, much needed. I've been going there for about six years and I, um, I'm there two to five times a day, seven days a week with dogs or with children or with adults that act like children. And um, it's a very, very important place for everyone, for runners, for skiers, for joggers, disc golf people, dog people. Um, I know people that come from Granby, from Greenfield, from Sunderland, from many other places, people that come to Smith College graduation, to events, and they've never seen anything like it. Uh, there is no place where dogs run free. I do believe that there should be regulations, there should be some type of organization, some type of symbiotic way where everybody can work together and we can all obviously make it healthy, sustainable for everybody and everything. But that being said, we also need to work together a little bit more. Um, and I say that because um, Voluntarily, I put a trash can there and I empty it all the time, which is fine. I don't mind doing that. But I think that it's not a, no, it's not, that was not, it was not to elicit any type of credit. It was more the fact that if we don't do anything at all, nothing gets done, basically. So that was sort of my point in doing that. And um, so this dialogue in terms of dogs, runners, everything is, is absolutely important and necessary and needed. And, um, Another point about the freedom of dogs is that I do know people that walk there that have no dogs or that lost their dogs or that lost their mothers or fathers or people that lost children or whatever and they go there and they feel better. They see dogs, dogs go up to them. I do believe that unruly dogs, undisciplined dogs, you know, there should be some type of reprimand, some type of regulations. There are so many things to be done and I'm so thankful that all of you are here and I'm very grateful that you are all considering everything. But, um, very, very, very hoping very much that we keep this multi-use. Uh, there's nothing like it anywhere around. Um, not a Massachusetts native at all. I'm kind of new to all this and you know, New York City, we have absolutely nothing like this. And nothing will ever be like this around. Um, so I, I really hope that we can all just continue and kind of work together, you know, as sentient beings, we all need to work together type of thing. So um, thank you and um, have a good night. Thanks. Hi, uh, I'm Lauren Simmons. I live in East Hampton. Uh, I grew up in this area. I've been going to the uh, state hospital grounds for more than 30 years. I used to work as a paramedic in the community. I transported patients to and from the state hospital. Uh, I was very uh, touched to hear about the history of the state hospital that I was unaware of. Um, education is really important. I had no idea what, what uh, you guys face in terms of agriculture, sticks, species, all that kind of stuff. I don't know what's growing up there. And I've been here a long time and I don't know it. So I think that education and educating the community is really uh, a vital part of this. Um, I'm a dog person. And uh, I just want to say that I, I feel that Northampton in this community is so diverse. And we've been so creative to make people feel welcome here. I think that every group that's represented here has legitimate interest and legitimate right, right to be at that park and to use it the way they see, that the way they've been doing, to be respectful of each other and to make this place uh, the gem that it is to continue to make it something that we can be proud of and let everyone use it in a way that's respectful. And that means everyone has to pull their weight, dog people included, runners, they've been pulling their weight, everybody. And I really want to do that. Um, but I think that there are ways to educate people and make this happen, whether we make community public service a part of this, we get radio people involved. There's a lot that we can do to keep this going and to make it. It is a, it is a, a multi-use de facto. It's been that way for years and years. And I would think that people, people said this is going to be a challenge, it's going to be hard, but I look at it as an opportunity to make this something that we could be proud of in our state and probably something that doesn't even exist anywhere else in this country. So maybe that's a bit grandiose, but you know, I like to think big. So I really I encourage everyone to be a part of this and um, to really try and look at other people's points of view 
and understand how we can make this work together. Thanks. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Nicholas Chavez. Um, I have lived in Northampton. I currently lived in, live in Holyoke. Um, I work at University of Massachusetts in Amherst. Um, and I guess I'm here in support of everything I've heard about tonight. Um, I think one of the, the beautiful things about, uh, you know, what I know primarily is, is the dog park is the large number of different activities that happen there, sometimes concurrently, with so few problems. Um, I walk my dog there several times a week. Uh, I hike different parts of it. Um, I like to frisbee golf there several times a week. Um, I look forward to running with the club. I haven't done that yet, but uh, I'm almost able to. Um, and uh, I think I just want to point out uh, that um, for the large number of people that are using the park and in such an ad hoc way um, with no, uh, you know, it's just very organic, uh, the way all these groups come in and do what they do, um, the, the problems have been, or you know, my personal problems have been nil, and uh, I've, I've never had a problem with another dog or their owner, an altercation. Um, furthermore, it's everybody seems to do a good job of, of policing the park. Um, you know, when I hike Mount Tom, I could easily pack out uh, a garbage bag full of other people's trash, and uh, often I do. Um, at the, the dog park uh, and any of the activities that I do, that would be impossible. Um, there's almost never any litter to find. You know, if there's a stray bottle, you know, we tend to pick it up and pack it out. But um, that, that's so minimal, you know, across all the different activities. And I think that's worth pointing out and preserving. And, um, you know, I hope and pray that, uh, you know, we, we can all find a way to work together, to live together, and, you know, adjust our activities as need be so that, um, you know, we can respect each other and continue to do the things that we love. Uh, thank you very much for listening to us. Hi, uh, good evening, my name is Kay, and um, I own a small business in Northampton, and I live in, my husband and I live in Florence. Uh, we adopted a dog a few months ago, so I'm pretty new to this so-called dog park, but I have to say, um, I feel like I'm gonna start crying. I, it's, it's a wonderful place to come, and it's, uh, we moved here from New York City, and <laughs> I can tell you, there's, I, it, it's like night and day, and e we looked at a lot of small towns before we chose Northampton to make our home when we left the city. And um, although we didn't have a dog at that point, we did know about the dog park, and it was it was a deciding factor for us to make our home here. And um, it's so informal, this place that we call the dog park, and I'm almost I'm amazed every time that it is so sort of beautifully run. I know that there are probably incidents. I have never witnessed any kind of dog aggression or weirdness that, that has been mentioned tonight, but um, for the number of people that use that park, it seems um, like it's pretty wonderful. And I know we keep calling it a gem, but I have to tell you, it's so important to me. And I, <laughs> this is making me so nervous because I'm a terrible public speaker, but I'm here because my dog, Daisy, could not be. Uh, she's a very small dog, and she plays with the big dogs like she is the big dog. And <laughs> um, I, I just love that place, and I hope I know it's important for runners and the agricultural uses, its primary use, so I, I just hope we can all kind of work together. And I think if any place in this great country can do that, Northampton is the place that can. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is Kitty Hay. I actually am a new resident at Village Hill, and I'm also not a public speaker. I'm a musician, so this is not, not an easy gig. Um, I just wanted to say something that maybe is a little contradictory about the um, about the dog park, so-called dog park, um, and that is that um, I go there very, very rarely um, because I am, frankly, really disgusted by the amount of dog feces that there are on the edges of the trail. Um, I came out when it um, when the snow had melted hoping that perhaps it was a little cleaner. And the, every edge down from the, um, uh, from the gardens, the edges were completely covered with dog poop. And a lot of that is still there. Um, so maybe there's some, maybe everything is so joyous and everybody's so happy with their dogs and having so much fun that they don't notice the amount of, of, of feces that are lining the edges of the trails. Um, a wonderful thing happened about 15 years ago on the other side of the river. My friend Karen Axelrod, who some of you might know, started to single-handedly pick up the dog poop on her own. She took giant garbage bags. She went all the way down to Paradise Pond with a shovel, and she dragged the stuff out. And you should have seen the bags of poop she had. 
and she single-handedly changed the culture over there on the other side of the river. It was really, I mean, it was notable. It was really notable. Um, you know, you had to hand it to her. She got in touch with um, Dussault. She said, would you guys come weekly and pick up the dog poop if I bought bags? So she, out of her own pocket, which would be occasionally, you know, $100, $150, um, put up a, a thing with bags in it, and people used those bags. Largely, people used those bags, and they started picking up after their dogs, and people started putting their dogs on leash. I don't live over there anymore, so I don't know if that's still, um, still a lot cleaner, but I think it's a lot cleaner on the other side of the river. So I simply can't get down with this idea of letting dogs go free. Um, if they're going to make the mess that they do, and people are going to leave the mess that they leave, because it pollutes the river, it pollutes the agricultural areas, and frankly, letting dogs run up and down out of the river leaves the, the banks denuded, so that all those um, invasive species can move in, um, and nothing can grow there when you have animals rushing up and down out of the river. So I'm sorry to, to strike a sour note on this, but um, this, is the this is what I've seen, this is what I've noticed. So thank you for the opportunity to speak. Good evening. Um, I'm not a public speaker either, and um, I just have to say, I think my dog would be really proud of me for being here, <laughs> because this is the last thing I'd ever thought I'd do. Um, I've been walking at the dog park for almost 20 years, almost every day. And I've had um, a couple dogs in that time. And it brings me qu not as quite as much joy as it brings my dog. And I can attest to that by the way my dog acts. We start the day when I open my eyes He's sitting there staring at me. And when I go downstairs, he strategically puts his body in front of me every step of the way until I say, let's go. When he gets in the car, he cries the whole length of the way, every single day, until we get to the dog park. And heaven forbid, if I have to stop for gas or cleaning or whatever on the way, he cries. Sometimes my dog doesn't bark, but he speaks. And he tries to verbalize, and I won't do that now. It's the most, com <laughs> it's the most comical thing you've ever heard because it comes out almost in syllables. And he does not do that frequently. But if I don't get to the dog park quick enough, he will start to do that. When he gets out of the car, he leaps like a bunny rabbit for the first quarter of the dog truck park. And he goes up to any person that he can find and circles them. And he, I should say my dog is a golden retriever and golden retrievers love people. When it, through every season, he has so much joy. In the winter time, he'll stick his nose in the snow and run through the field endlessly until he finds somebody else to play with. If I'm trying to get out of there in 30 minutes, most of the time it's an hour because I hate to interrupt the joy that he's having because it's so self-evident. By the time we get back to the car, I'll open the back gate and say, oh, and he sits down and turns around and looks down the path as if to say, can we do this again? So the reason that I'm here is this not about me. It's about the, the true joy, like you see in your kids, when you know your kids, that it doesn't take a word. It takes a look. It takes a feeling. And that is what it brings to my dog and my kids would say the same thing. They will send me pictures sometimes when they take him. I can't see not being able to do this there when I've done it for 20 years. I know there are issues, and like other people have said, I hope we can work them out. I think everything has a solution. 
But on behalf of him and other dogs, once you experience the joy, it is pure joy to watch him. And I would hate to lose it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Diana Riddle, and I go to the dog park a lot. I, I'm a big advocate of environmental protection, and um, I believe in ecology, and that's part of the reason I'm very interested in the composting project that I think is, would be great uh, to have happen up there. Um, and I think it's great that Smith Vocational has such an impact on this piece of property because it's an educational facility, agricultural facility. It um, could do a lot to expand the education of the public because it's such an intensely used public space um, that there's a lot of opportunity for people to understand better about fields that are fallow and fields that are active and fields that are planted and hayed and what the difference is in all of that and how it needs to be used and preserved. Um, and that the, the dog walkers would be happy to know, understand that and help with that as well as uh, I think dog walkers would love to have the information about how to better um, take care of the dog waste that's produced there and how to deal with the erosion problems that are that are apparent. Um, the, it's been talked about a lot how much running is great for people and communities and the health of everyone and I believe it's the same for dogs, that dogs that are active and socialized in that way is, is really unique and very healthy for them. Hello. Um, my name is Pat McDonough. I live in Northampton. Um, thank you all for, for your program tonight. I'm really happy to hear about the, what the um, Vogue, Vogue School does it on those grounds. Um, I've been walking on the state hospital grounds for about 30 years. It used to be my favorite part, for a place anywhere to walk, I think. Um, I walk there very seldom now uh, because it, I, for me it's not really fun anymore, I'm sorry to say. Um, I've been bitten. I have um, been harassed by dogs. And I, um, I just don't feel, um, I don't feel I can trust dog owners to keep the dogs under control. In the last uh, three or four years, I've kept track of, um, I've put aside letters to the editors of the Hampshire Gazette of, about, about dogs in the state hospital grounds. I've got a, actually a, a big stack, about 40 letters. They come in waves. It goes like this. Um, someone uh, has a rather harrowing experience at the dog park. They're bitten or the dog is attacked. They write a letter. Then four or five other people write letters saying, yeah, yeah, that happened to me too. Then a couple of dog walkers say, no, 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 I walk there every day, there's no problem. And then there's a calm for a few months and then it repeats itself. In the last three years, there have been two editorials by the Gazette asking the city council to come to grips with the leash law, especially at the state hospital grounds, because people are getting hurt there. There have been several letters of people who sustain serious injuries. Um, I, I really sympathize with the dog walkers. I used to own a dog. I used to joke my first child was a, was a collie, because my husband and I loved our, our collie so much. Um, and, I, and I enjoy dogs. I like watching them play. But um, although most dog walkers are responsible, there are so many dogs there. As people have pointed out, people come not just from Northampton, but from the whole valley and even surrounding areas to use that place. That. Um, even if a small percentage of people are not responsible, that's still a lot of dangerous incidents that happen. Also, that degree of use is, impacts the river very negatively. As various people have said, the vegetation is worn away in those places people enjoy so much where they swim with their dogs. And when the vegetation leaves, then every time the river gets high and floods, it washes away soil, and it's a very bad cycle. Um, I would love to see a dog park in Northampton, a true dog park. I do sympathize with dog walkers who want to have a place to run freely with their dogs. I don't think that the Bird's Pit area is that place. It interferes with other people's enjoyment and use, and I think, um, uh, I don't really think it's compatible with all the multi-uses of that area. I'm sorry to say. Um, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, I will be happy to contribute to a true dog park in Northampton, but I, I hope it's not there. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Kathy McNally, and I run a Facebook page called Poop Free Hamp.
So I hope you will all like it. I have a dog, and uh, I got a dog about three years ago, so I went to the dog park, and I totally loved it there. And I would always pick up my poop, because that's what you do, and Karen Axelrod is a dear friend of mine, too. Um, we got some friends from Wilbraham to visit, and we said, we have got a treat for you. We're going to bring you over to the Mill River. It is fantastic there. And it was the horrible season for dog poop, which is melting snow in March and April. And we were so proud and snobby about this beautiful path. And you know what? They were grossed out. There was so much dog poop, and they kind of opened our eyes to how gross it was. So I really wanted to do something about it, and I haven't done much in an active way. I do try to pick up a hell of a lot of it, which is disgusting, like Karen. Um, but I started this Facebook page, so I hope you'll all like it, because I put up pictures, and dog poop Poisoning is a huge subject in the news. In some apartment complexes, you have to register your dog's DNA, and then the DNA of the poop is checked so that you can get in trouble. So we all love dogs, and dogs will poop whether they're on a leash or not, but we should be picking it up all the time. That's all. Uh, folks, if I may, there were a couple of statements, and perhaps I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't clear when I made my remarks at the beginning, so if you allow me, and I'll be really quick. I thank you all for coming. I think we heard from uh, 37 people. I've written down what you've said. Um, I, I tried to make it clear to you that in the eyes of the department, this is the beginning of a process, not the end of a process. So we came out here tonight to hear what you have to say. But I do want to also be clear that this is farmland. And uh, there was reference made to, uh, in 1983, it was designated at agricultural land. Well, actually, what that did, and uh, I'll let the historians help me here, but it was agricultural land as part of Northampton State Hospital for many, many years. Uh, I assume, I know that's how it was in most state hospitals in the state, that actually uh, the, the patients, the residents, farm the lands to produce the food for, them, for themselves, for the hospital. However, we all know that uh, state hospital, the model of uh, mental health care changed, and food production changed, and accessibility to food changed. So in 1983, I would say very, very wisely, uh, uh, actions were taken to preserve the land as agricultural. So that's what happened. It, it didn't become agricultural in 1983. It just went from a previous state agency that owned it, transferred over to the Department of Ag Resources. It's not a policy, and a suggestion was made that since that happened in 1983, perhaps in 2015, the Department of Agricultural Resources should take a new look at that. Well, I want to be very clear. It's not a policy of our department. It's not a guideline of our department. It's not honoring a traditional practice. It's the law. And my department doesn't make laws. With all due respect, the general court makes laws. There was reference made. I just want to also be clear that in a, in a general sense, the use of roads and trails on farmland, we believe, does not necessarily interfere with agricultural use. And we see that done on other agricultural uh, parcels throughout the state that we have an interest in. So to the uh, woman and the people you spoke first, but others spoke about running and use of the trails, I think there easily can be coordination uh, with any kind of agricultural activity. To the uh, gentleman who feared that this was an exercise in futility, I'm sorry you, you have that fear. Um, we're more than willing to uh, try to arrive at uh, a plan 
uh, that allows what I call use that's incidental to the agricultural use required by law to take place. And I think what you heard from the superintendent earlier was uh, he'd like to uh, uh, form some type of, of group because truthfully, I, I would hope that a proposal would come organically out of the community, understanding what the law is. Um, and then uh, we'd be happy to review that and, and try to come to some accommodation um, uh, that affords as many as possible uh, some degree of satisfaction with the use of that property. So again, thank you very much for allowing me to hear what you have to say. Um, I don't feel it was a futile visit, and I hope you don't either. Listen, thank you everybody for coming in tonight. You know, this is the reason why I love being in Northampton, because uh, the community here is fantastic. And you all came out and you were respectful of one another. And it was just a great thing for me to watch. I enjoyed it, it was, it was a couple hours, but I, I really enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, what I would like to do right now is the, the, the overarching themes that I heard were the runners and the dog walkers, okay? Um, I would like to invite those groups, while I talk with the commissioner, I would like to invite those groups to appoint one person from each group. I really don't want five people uh, talking about the same issue. I want one person so we can have a manageable group. And, and you have my word that anything that this committee does is gonna have value when I pass it along to the Board of Trustees and uh, eventually to the uh, Department of Agriculture. I, I can promise you that. So uh, I'm gonna be up here at the front table. I'm going to adjourn the meeting, but I would like those factions to please appoint one person to come up to me, get me an email address, and I will contact you. If the folks from the orienteering and the in the in the disc golf and um, the composting would like to be a part of that, I would love to have you. And Tom, I don't know if you're interested, but you're more than welcome to. Okay. So listen, thank you all for coming, and I'll be up here waiting to talk to you. Thanks.